Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and, through the internet, deliver it to you. My name is Rev. Todd Laddick, and today I'm bringing to you part one of a new six-part series entitled, to, entitled The Matrix, with today's message specifically entitled, What is The Matrix?, uh, based off of Revelation chapter 17. Now, before we go into scripture, you're going to notice a lot of white noise in the background. Hopefully that's not too distracting, but it is like 90 plus degrees outside. And, um, well, you know, I've got to at least uh, not die of heat exhaustion <laughs> while recording these. So I've got the air conditioning on. Hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, and if it gets a little cooler than this, I, you know, I'll turn it back off again. But anyway, uh, today's scripture is based off of Revelation chapter 17. So let us dive into the word today. One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. <clears throat> there I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and bl blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made out of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand, she held a goblet full of obscenities and, and the impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Why are you so amazed? The angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with the seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive but isn't now, and yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit to go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of the beast who had died. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings have already fallen, the sixth now reigns, and the seventh is yet to come. But his reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, uh, yet to, but is no longer, uh, excuse me, the scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, yet to come, but his reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, is the eighth king. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns of the beast are the ten kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. They will all agree to give him their power and authority. Together they will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them because he is the lord of lords and king of all kings. And his called and chosen and faithful ones will be with him. Then the angel said to me, The waters where the, where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. The scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate, uh, all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked, eat her flesh, and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out their purposes. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast, so the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. Amen. Apologize for the brief hiccup in there. Uh, I realized I was, I think, double reading a line, and I'm not sure why that, that was, but <clears throat> thank you for bearing with me. The world order we know is not what it seems. Though it offers us everything from the moon and back, it fails to deliver. Thankfully, God offers us a way out through Jesus Christ. First, 
I have to ask this question though. How many of you have not seen the film The Matrix starring Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, and company? Let me, let me begin by explaining the basic basics of the plot just in case any of you haven't seen it so that you can best follow and get the most of the series um, since this is going to be a series on the matrix so the film opens up with a black screen which fills up with green computer data data raining down character by character um, it is clear you are inside a computer that much you can tell just from the opening and you hear talking and then the sounds of radio or some indiscreet music or noise um, and then another black screen with a blinking cursor the words then begin to type on the screen with a digital chiming sound waking someone sleeping on the desk beneath the screen the person looks up to see the words typing themselves. Wake up, Neo. The Matrix has you. At that moment, we are introduced to the first and most important character in the movie franchise. In the movie franchise. Neo, the hacker name of one Mr. John Anderson, who works for a computer software firm by day, uh, you know, he is told, uh, this, this Neo, to make a long story short, is told to follow the white rabbit, a cryptic code for what turned out to be a woman with a white rabbit tattoo who is knocked on his door. And he's told this via this computer, via this computer that's typing by itself to Neo telling him to do something. And he's led to a place where he meets a hacker he has long wondered if ex you know, he existed and hoped to meet one day, a hacker by the name of Morpheus. Why? Um, so, because Neo had somehow heard of a matrix through... Uh, a, a, a matrix through him and others who had followed him and you know when you're online people can use the name Morpheus but who is Morpheus does Morpheus really exist but anyway this Morpheus is saying that there's something called the matrix and Neo wanted to find out what is the matrix I mean it's a it's a curious thing right what is the matrix upon meeting Morpheus, Neo is given very cryptic messages about a world that is illusion. This world being called the Matrix. An illusory world used to mask the true reality of humanity's plight. That we are slaves kept in an artificial embryo sack. We're slaves kept in artificial embryo sacs hooked up to a computer mainframe through a plug in the back of our heads. Where we are fed images of what the computers or machines have learned we humans accept as real. You see, at first they had this perfect world where there was no pain, no suffering, you know, what, what we would call heaven. And the people couldn't accept it because they were used to, in their former real lives, they were used to pain and suffering as a part of the human condition so uh yeah they 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 couldn't accept a perfect world as real so then the machines had to you know kind of generate this world that modeled the world of the past this uh, this world of suffering and pain this broken world we find ourselves in and all of this so that we can generate energy for the machines you see as we sit there and work our lives away in our heads we're creating energy for the machines whoa right kind of creepy surreal and you know as as surreal and unreal as that may sound when you think about it how do we know it's not true if we are indeed being fed images into our head how do we know that that what we're seeing right now isn't isn't that so this is the stuff that keeps you up late at night questioning do i really exist 
This is some real Rene Descartes mind-bending stuff. Morpheus then offers Neo a choice. He holds out his hand, and in it are two pills. One blue, the other red. Take the blue pill, and you will wake up in bed tomorrow as John Anderson, living the lie that has been built for you. Or take the red pill, and, to quote Morpheus, see how far this rabbit hole really goes. An obvious reference to Lewis Carroll's Alice in, Wonder Alice in Wonderland, which was one of Wachowski's influences in writing and making this film. So, you know, the rabbit hole is present throughout. Today, sisters and brothers, and for the next several weeks, you will be offered the same choice. Do you take the blue pill and remain in the matrix? Or do you choose the red pill and just see how far this rabbit hole goes? Of course, we're not in a literal computer system getting fed images by computers or machines, are we? But nonetheless, <laughs> or are we? That's the question, right? <laughs> but we are nonetheless in the matrix in another way. We are so attached to this world order, to the ways and the temptations and the promises of the world, that we are unable to truly see, let alone live, for God. Still, like Morpheus, God has given us a way out of the matrix, out of the world, and into the kingdom of heaven. And we who are Christian know that way to be Jesus Christ. There is no doubt the Wachowskis turned to the Bible to craft their story. The truth is they turned to the Bible, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and other religions and philosophical sources, which is what makes these films so brilliant and timeless. In today's scripture, God is is showing John a vision of what is to come to the new order. Like in The Matrix, the Bible chooses allegory, metaphor, and fantastic imagery in order to describe the current world order. In this chapter of Revelation, we read, After the bowls of God's wrath and judgment are poured on the city of Babylon, one of the bowl-pouring angels comes to John and explains the judgment that is about to fall on that wicked city. So, like we asked at the beginning, what is the Matrix? Let's ask, what is Babylon? Well, Babylon was an ancient, an ancient empire that conquered the Jews about 500 years before Christ was born, tore down the temple, and exiled all of the leadership to the city of Babylon. John is using this as a metaphor for the world order. In John's day, and it gets pretty clear in this text, that world order was the Roman world order, the Roman Empire. In our day and age, it's not going to take us too hard to realize, it is the American world order. Are you following me so far? So, the angel shows John that Babylon, shown now as a great harlot or prostitute who rules over many waters, again, in John's day and age, that was Rome. Today, America. Now, John uses the imagery of a wicked female, <clears throat> and I want to acknowledge this as a blind spot of John's. Well, first off, there was a, king, a queen in ancient Israel named Jezebel, who was wicked and, and led people, uh, you know, she was a wicked queen who did whatever she wanted, uh, you know, slept with whoever she wanted, killed whoever she wanted, and she uh, brought uh, her husband to uh, worship other gods besides, besides the one true God of Israel. The husband was a Jew, and uh, Jezebel was a Canaanite or something like that. And, um, and so anyway, so that John is, in this text, definitely re kind of using this as a, a way of referring back to that particular queen 
But this is a blind spot of John's. Uh, he lived in a patriarchal society and thought like a typical man of his day and age. A, a sellout has to be a woman, right? <laughs> Wrong. The prostitute could be a guy, should be a guy, since guys ruled the world back then. So I will refer to this prostitute, this Babylon, as a guy. Babylon the gigolo, or Babylon the male prostitute. The rulers of the earth have all committed adultery with him. And the people who belong to this world order have been made drunk on the wine of his immor immorality. There John was shown the image of the great gigolo Babylon riding on a scarlet beast. I won't belabor the full meaning of the beast because it goes quite deep and, and the Bible actually explains it better than I'm going to, so just reread the uh, text. But, uh, but beasts are typically nations and the horns are the rulers of said nations. And that's made pretty clear, again, in the Bible. So the nations and the rulers are under the sovereign rule of the world order, which is riding them like a beast of burden. Of course, this gigolo, this Babylon the Great, was drunk on the blood of all of God's people, destroyed through the millennia by this world order. So what does this all mean for us? Well, Babylon, strictly speaking, is the world we live in today. The world of luxury, of convenience, of promises of prosperity and the American dream. The world order, the big machine that keeps us in the daily bump and grind, that bitters us, that hardens us, that keeps us working like slaves with the elusive hope that will come out on top. And we have been drunk on the wine of this world order's immorality. We have placed politics above politeness. We have split off from each other because we refuse to compromise. We have put complacency as a high prior, higher priority than compliancy. We have worked, uh, worst of all, we have put ourselves before and even above God. Each and every one of us. And when I say compliancy, I mean compliancy to scripture, compliancy to what God is telling us to do at the heart of it, not the letter of the law, but the heart of the law. And as it says in Romans 3 verse 23, for everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. Everyone has. It says that right there in Romans 3:23. So, you know, we are drunk on the wine of this world's immorality. And so as in the film, The Matrix, God is offering us a choice today and always. Do you want to take the pill, the blue pill, and remain in the Matrix, Babylon the Great, as a slave to this current world order? Is ignorance truly bliss? Or are you compelled to take the red pill? To choose to wake up and see the world for what it truly is. A world order that is the great gigolo. Who comes in with empty promises only to rob you of all you have. Are you going to take the red pill? And wake up? To God who is calling to calling you to follow the white rabbit down the rabbit hole just to see how far this rabbit hole goes? If you come back next week, I will take your answer as a yes to the red pill. Taking the red pill is essential for us as the Christian church. We are Christians because we said yes to God by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our true world order as our true reality. The red pill is what we experience when we read the Bible and study what God is telling us about the world and about God's kingdom. It is what transforms us from who we think we are, the identity the, the world has given to us, to who God has created us to be, and we're transformed that way through the Holy Spirit. Over the next several weeks, we will dive into the matrix, not just the film, but our present reality 
and we will see how through the Bible and through films like The Matrix, we can grow even closer to the mind and heart of Christ. We now know what The Matrix is, that it's our current world order. Next week, we will learn just how deceptive our current world order is. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you and praise you for this message of hope and this message of warning. Lord, there is a sense of urgency that we often are lured away by the temptations and the empty promises of this world. And we're lured away from you, Lord, the only one who fulfills promises. Help us to see that clearly and help us to discern who to follow and who not. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I want to thank you for coming, of course, uh, and tuning into this uh, to this uh, message. It's a pleasure to bring them to you, and I hope you get as much out of them as I get out of uh, recording them and writing them. Um, with, lot, with that said, uh, please check out the episode notes if this is your main spiritual sustenance for the week and uh, you have it, the means to... Uh, to send us some financial support that would be helpful there are le links there to the uh, to Tidely and to PayPal and so if you can great if this is just supplemental and you're listening to this but you're part of another faith community then by all means support that faith community uh, and if you have it in you to support us both well that would be awesome and we would both be grateful with that said friends thank you again for tuning in remember that you are richly blessed so that you may be a blessing to others amen Go in peace.